At the end of a tough year, I wanted to showcase some of the best of British charity. St Edmunds in Norwich, dedicated to the vocational training of youngsters, has just received a highly prestigious award from the Centre for Social Justice. I'm grateful to the CSJ and St Ed's for their help in making this film. Morning, nice Liam. It's good to be here. St Edmunds in Norwich is no ordinary college. This award-winning charity provides vocational training to some 250 teenagers from across East Anglia. Some are regular school age, others are 16 plus. <laughs> Students at St Ed's, as it's known, have often been excluded from school, leaving with no qualifications. But they come here to succeed. Right, I think you'll be... Lorraine Bliss is St Ed's CEO, the driving force of this charity, which teaches teenagers hands-on skills that can earn them a living. All vocational through here. So it's cars and motorbikes? Yes, yeah, that's right. Over a million of our young people are not in education, employment or training for work, so-called NEETs. Their number have soared since Covid lockdown. These NEETs are St Ed's target audience, says Lorraine, and demand for places is high. One of the most popular courses is motor mechanics, motorbikes and cars, leading to a recognised city and guilds qualification. Daniel did badly at school. He rarely turned up. But he has a talent for fixing things and enjoys being at St Ed's. So it's just a belt which just spins. So when you give it a throw, it'll go, the piston will go up and then it'll like move the belt, like spin it. Being here makes sense to Daniel in a way that school never did. Why do you prefer this to school? Because it's like more hands-on. I don't get treated like a child. I get treated like an adult. And why, why do you want to learn to be a, a motorbike mechanic? Uh, for the future, like, I just like fixing bikes, so like, fixing cars, whatever. And I'm told you're really good at this? Yeah. And how's that make you feel? Good. Sam's story's similar. He found school boring and didn't get on with his teachers. At St Ed's, he's doing well. School was more of a chore, you know, something you had to do. You have to wake up in the morning, go there at a certain time. Whereas here, I, I enjoy coming here. I happily wake up in the morning and get here on time every day, get about half an hour early. Ashton also missed a lot of school, but tutors here say he's a star pupil, well capable of running his own business. Hopefully move on to doing some further learning. And it doesn't scare you fixing cars. It's all very complicated. Do you think you can handle it? Yeah, I can give it a go. <laughs> After his apprenticeship, Mike was a mechanic for 25 years until personal injury put him out of work. He says vocational training these days is sorely lacking. Need more of it. Need more of it about to help. Like me and myself, pen to paper, I, I didn't enjoy it. Hands on. Yeah, I loved it. Along with mechanics, St Ed's building departments also very popular. So when you've got enough flash on the wall, you can move on stage too flat and too early. Kenzie found school tough and got into trouble. Guided by practically minded tutors, he's finding his way. What do your parents think that you're making such a success of this? To be fair, um, I know my parents are quite proud of me because they they've kind of seen me like like I didn't go to school a lot, but they can see that I'm actually like wanting to come here now. So they're quite happy for me that I'm actually like, trying to get myself somewhere. Are you happy? I am happy, yeah. As a charity, St Ed's relies heavily on local firms providing the building and other materials essential to teaching practical skills. When I first came here, they didn't have a classroom department at all. Um, we've managed to sort of work through with some, some different trade companies and gypsum and that kind of thing, and they're the ones that's provided us with all the timber, all the plasterboards, all the plaster, all the hardwood, so our guys actually get the opportunity to do some plastering. So again, we don't teach them just the basics. We actually sort of teach them something that they can go away into the, into the world and have a future with. Right, so, solution goes on. Alan, an experienced painter and decorator, now teaches what he knows to others. He also reports that local firms keen to recruit skilled youngsters often help to equip St Ed's. I was presented when I got here with some very rudimentary paintbrushes. So we put some feeders out to uh, local companies, quite a big brand of paint actually, and we got back an amazing response. Uh, two boxes full of paintbrushes and rollers and roller trays, and then with that, with the right products in their hands, they can do a better finish and have a better quality of work. And, uh, and that's what we got. As well as a lack of painters and decorators, 
The UK needs many more construction workers too. Wow. Huge shortage of bricklayers again. Well, all construction areas. Yeah, yeah. Bricklaying's often the most oversubscribed course at St Ed's. Students know if they learn this trade and get their city and guilds, they can make a steady living. Nathan's determined to become a skilled bricklayer. He's progressing well, and while he knows construction can be tough, he's looking forward to making his way. I enjoy the hard work, if anything. So why didn't you work hard at school? It just weren't the right environment for me, to sit down at a desk every day and just put, put, writing on a piece of paper, but whereas here, as I'm like, I'm, yeah, more physical and active doing stuff. Aidan's mum and dad both died very young. He now lives with foster parents. Having refused schooling, his prospects weren't good, but St Ed's changed that. Aidan says he owes this charity so much. Where would you be, Aidan, if you hadn't have come to St Ed's, if you hadn't have found this place and the people here that are teaching you? I can't actually tell you. I'd be useful, useless, really. I don't know where I'd be. But, yeah, this has got me, got me in a good place. Changed your life? Yeah, right? yeah. Definitely. Is that an exaggeration? It's changed no, your no, life? It, well, it definitely has, yeah. I don't know where I'd be without St Ed's, really. Aidan's skill and dedication have paid off. He's been recognised as a prize winner among national bricklaying trainees. He's a totally different person. He's a lot more outgoing. He's learning to communicate with other people a lot better. As before, he used to just shut down. He wouldn't talk to anyone. Didn't like school. Didn't want to do a lesson. Had the teachers chasing him day in, day out. He, would, he wouldn't be doing what he's doing now if it weren't for St Ed's. He'd be running wild in the streets somewhere. Not here doing what he loves doing. So, that's a living in this him. for him, right? Yeah, He's good at it. Definitely, yeah. The skills taught at St Ed's are valuable and command decent wages. The national shortage of plasterers, bricklayers and carpenters means students know if they turn up, listen and learn, they can earn good money. I've always enjoyed woodwork. I like working with my hands. Um, I like craftsmanship. I like seeing the end results. Um, I like making stuff. Um, but, yeah. Do you think you can make a living out of carpentry? Yeah. A good living? Yeah, 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 good living, yeah, it's a good salary, yeah. Embarking on a course at St Ed's provides often troubled students with some purpose building self-esteem. But the end goal is to help these youngsters find steady employment. That's why St Ed's employs a dedicated transitions officer, to help these youngsters find their place in the world of work. The employment marketplace is difficult for anyone, actually, um, whether you've got lots of qualifications or you haven't. So it is tough, but which is why we're trying to train people on industry standard qualifications that actually will mean there are routes from their training here into employment. It's possible and it happens, and we have a huge success rate as far as getting people into employment is concerned here. What would happen here in Norwich if we didn't have St Ed's? There are 130 post-16 students here, 100 school students here. What would they do? Where would they go? You know, they would be a drain on society, they would be a drain on the benefit system, on the health service. It's absolutely essential that St Ed's is here working with these young people. Do you remember when this was all being built? Yeah, yeah. Charlie is a standout St Ed's success story. He left school with no qualifications, but is now a high-earning building surveyor, excelling in a complex specialised role. St Ed's and Lorraine's influence have been key to his success, says Charlie. But like many others who come here, his journey wasn't easy. This was the stepping stone, this was, this was the first point. And now I'm in charge of multi-million pound projects. Um, I've worked in Norwich, I've worked in London, I've worked in Essex, and I loved my career. At St Ed's, Charlie found role models and mentors, people he could relate to in a way he couldn't relate to teachers at school. I remember some staff back there, there was a guy called Martin, he was a, he was a carpentry teacher, um, and he was brilliant, he showed me the ropes, he sort of took me under his wing. I was a young 16-year-old guy, thought I knew the world, but in reality I knew nothing. And uh, he just showed me the way, and, and he, he you know, went out of his way a bit further then, he'd show me stuff that I could make money on the side from, and from a 16-year-old guy, if you can make money, you're making money. It's, it's brilliant. Away from the rough and tumble of mechanics and construction, St Ed's trains hair and beauty students too. 
Teenagers who may have struggled with mainstream education can gain valuable qualifications, such as a level two hair and beauty diploma. Many at St Ed's say that being here, being part of a community, helps bolster their mental health too. The reality is that St Ed's students often come from broken homes, some having lived through domestic violence. This charity can help them succeed, whatever their start in life. We have students who have lots of issues. Um, some of them are previous trauma that they don't or haven't spoken about before. So when they come into a centre, especially like St Ed's, within a couple of months, young people are talking to us with topics and subjects that have affected them and they haven't spoken to anyone else before. So that's a new thing for them to disclose some quite um, horrific things, if I can be honest with you, yeah. In St Ed's Canteen, trainee chefs prepare lunch for students and staff alike. One day these youngsters could earn a living, helping to fill the gaps in the UK's huge hospitality sector. I catch up with Tracy, mother and grandmother to several St Ed's students past and present. After her grandson Alfie lost both his parents, Tracy says St Ed's tutors helped him rebuild his life. But they gave him structure. They give him something to look forward to. They gave him all the support he needed and still do. He's now nearly 23. And working in construction? Yeah. And making a living? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he gets other kids have problems just like he does. You know what I mean? Which he didn't know none of that. He thought he was alone. So it gave him some self-esteem, yeah. some yeah. purpose? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, he's quite confident now. Um, and he's a dad. And he's a brilliant dad. Um, yeah. Now a volunteer trustee here, Tracy says St Ed's, quite literally, is a lifesaver. These kids have got nowhere to go. They'd all end up on the street. Education don't want them. What would your life be like, Tracy, without St Ed's? I would have buried my grandson. As a charity, St Ed's receives no core government funding. While it gets some money for each student that attends, the college relies heavily on philanthropic donations and help from local firms. We don't actually receive any direct funding from central government. We've turned over just a million pounds, just over a million pounds this year. First time we've been audited. But having said that, our salary bill alone is £875,000. So it doesn't leave an awful lot, more, not lot left to run the organisation. So you're heavily reliant on grants from grant-making bodies, other charitable trusts? Absolutely. Um, because we have been in business uh, for, for a long, long time, uh, we have good reputation with a lot of the large charitable trusts. Um, but it, it is a headache because, you know, what I really want to do is see this organisation become stable so that it's available for young people forever and a day, not to have to keep worrying about where the next penny's going to come from. Lorraine pays tribute to local building firms in particular, for whom St Ed's provides a valuable service in turn, helping them identify skilled workers they can later employ. All the big construction companies, it speaks for itself. They're supporting us, they're taking our young people on work experience, traineeships, employment. Provided you with materials and oh, tools yes. in some cases, right? Yeah, I mean, when we talk about relying on charitable trusts, yes, uh, uh, we're actually very, very well blessed from the construction industry with huge donations, and I cannot thank them enough because obviously that helps our bottom line as well if we don't have to buy all the materials. St Edmund's Society opened almost 60 years ago as a charity for homeless young people. It began to focus on vocational training in 2012, something Lorraine says must be preserved. When you see the amount of achievements, the amount of outcomes that we're getting with these young people, it's phenomenal. And also bearing in mind that some of these kids have the most challenging backgrounds that they live in and they've had more trauma in their little lives than some of us have had in a lifetime. The awards on the St Ed's reception wall point to the scale of this charity's success. Lorraine's built a strong management team, but worries what will happen when she finally retires. St Ed's staff want a network of vocational training charities across the country.
Why isn't there? It's a huge question. Um, and the answer is, there should be. So we need the funding to be able to do that. There should be a St Ed's in every city or town in the country because there are young people that need our help. You know, education's a big thing and people do slip between the cracks and it's up to people like us who have got the, the sort of the, 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 the compassion just to sort of go, hey, we can help you. We can put a tool in your hands which will give the ability to make some money and you'll have some worth. And a lot, and lot these kids need is just sort of some sort of worth. I think more places like this would be a godsend for a lot of the youth coming through who maybe haven't come from the most privileged backgrounds and therefore they need a little bit of stability, a little bit of guidance and uh, somewhere like this is fantastic for it. For people who don't have much at Christmas. St Ed's also has an outreach programme. Students and staff wrap presents for others less fortunate. Lorraine says it's all part of the St Ed's training, teaching young people to be responsible and make something of their lives. You know, we want better for our young people. Let's get them trained up, qualifications so that they can look for better opportunities, better lives and also to be part of a community. And it's actually it's quite a sad indictment that there are so many young people that need services like St Ed's. So there you have it, a day in the life of St Edmunds in Norwich, a truly inspirational charity. My thanks once again to Lorraine Bliss, all staff and students at St Ed's and the Centre for Social Justice. To them and to you, all the best for 2023.